This is the Tech Talks playlist from Web Summit. I'm your host, David Savage. We've been going around Web Summit and we've talked to five people from the conference floor trying to find out why they're here, what's going on, and what the buzz is on the ground in Lisbon. This is your twice weekly technology podcast brought to you by the Harvey Nash Group, where we talk to leaders across the industry and bring you a bit of technology news. Hope you enjoy this playlist. So I'm chatting to Paul Hamilton. Uh, Paul, is it fair to say that you're from Topia or from V Together? What's the best way of, of introducing you? So um, I run a company called V Together, yep. and we are effectively a design agency that creates virtual spaces on top of a platform called Topia. Yep. So Topia.i is a special chat platform. Um, it's free to use um, yep. for an individual if you want to go on there and create something yourself. Um, but we create um, bespoke. Um, virtual spaces with some add-ons of various types. We add little bits of code, little bits of functionality on top of that basic platform. And it's probably best described as, whilst whilst there are 3D versions, as a 2D version of what now everyone is familiar with as the metaverse in the terms of platforms where people can come together and have serendipitous kind of conversations and events and, and, and interactions. Yeah, so I'm going to add a new one for you. So Topi is actually 2.5D. So um, it exists on a re- yeah you've not heard of that before. It exists on a regular screen. You go into it through your browser. You don't need to download anything. Um, you have a little avatar that moves around, which is variably um, sometimes referred to as a jelly baby. Uh, the Germans call him a gummy bear. Um, we have a little character no, definitely that a jelly moves baby. around. Yeah, yeah, the, the, the Germans are wrong. I'm just going to say that now. Ge- it's a jelly baby to anyone listening. We're, ad- we're adaptable. We're culturally <laughs> adaptable. Um, but that little avatar um, can move around a space. Yeah. Um, that space is effectively a permanent space, so yeah. it's a place to go, so it sort of fits into that bit of the metaverse. We have ambient sound, um, and we have images that start to make it more immersive, and we can personalize it infinitely. Um, but some of the graphics um, in that space you can interact with, so you can walk in and out uh, of some of the spaces. So that's where that kind of 2.5D comes from. And again, that just makes it feel more immersive. So for example, we have a little forest, some of the trees you go behind, some of the trees you go in front, and it's, it just makes it quite engaging yeah. um, to go into that space. And let's face it, like, we're sat outside at Web Summit, there's a bit of background chatter. Yeah. Those kind of noises do add to an experience, and it's the same on a platform where you're walking up to people. If there is, a, it, it is something extra, it makes it feel more real. 100%, and it, what, it, what it creates is an emotional response. So um, most of the stuff we're doing now has got nothing to do with COVID or lockdown. So we're working with distributed companies, distributed teams, um, doing, we did an event last night. It was physically at the in and out Club in London, Mm -hmm. but we had a panel beaming into a virtual world so that people who weren't in London could join from wherever they were around the world. So could join that event and it was a hybrid event. So we're doing that kind of thing. But um, we did a lot of lockdown stuff last year. Um, We had one little area, which was the single most popular area and it was a bar. And as you moved into that area, the ambient background noise kicked in, and it was just bar chatter, it was just recorded bar chatter, almost white noise. But there's a little chinking of glasses, there's people chattering. And um, we had somebody come in when we first did it, and she said, this is amazing, this feels just like my local wine bar. She said, I can almost smell it. And after a hesitation said, actually this is better than my local wine bar, because I can't smell it. But it's a genuine emotional response when people yeah. go into these things. So look, I saw an interesting comment from someone that I respect and is very well thought of and learned in the tech space on Twitter. Okay. Kind of like, why is everyone going on about the metaverse? You know, it's almost like we're out of lockdown. We can get back to physical events. Here we are at Web Summit in Portugal. 40,000 people have come, despite the fact that we are still in a pandemic. We are not post-pandemic. Um, I, though firmly believe that there is a space for both. I'd be interested to know what your opinion is, especially given what you run, being here at a physical event. Yeah, no, absolutely. We keep getting asked that. You, you run you run virtual reality company and here you are at a real event. Um, 100%, and they're, they're, they're serving very, very different needs. So um, what I love about Web Summit is there is this phenomenal buzz and energy here. Um, they do a fantastic job. Um, they published the stats yesterday, 50.3% of attendees are women. Yeah, I saw that. Um, yeah. Which is something they've been trying to do for a long time to drive that up. I think they've got a little bit um, to go in terms of more broad diversity. Yeah. Um, but that's a fantastic achievement. So, you know, you can give a round of applause for that. Um, but you get a very different kind of interaction um, at a, a big event like that. And we, we have run virtual events in our spaces. So we did one for the drinks industry. 
We had Coca-Cola in there, Diageo, Pernod Ricard, and your avatar could walk around and you could chat to people. But again, it's a very different um, type of interaction you get here. Um, and you can just, there's just a lot more. So um, the, the great thing about the internet years ago was it broke that trade-off between richness and reach of communication. So um, it used to be that the, the broader your reach went, the less richness you had. And um, the web and web 2.0 sort of broke that. Um, so you could have really, really rich communication with a broad reach and it could be interactive. Um, but even web 2.0 tends to be fairly yeah. one way. You know, the interaction, if you take Zoom, Skype, Teams, whatever, they're all, they're all the same. Um, it's about having uh, one person speaking at a time and about having an audience. Yeah. And that was great last year because it, it gave us something. But what you don't have is that few to few conversation. And you really get that at an event like this. And you get, you used that word serendipity before. You get that serendipity of just bumping into somebody. Yeah. You know, I bumped into somebody on the metro yesterday. We had a fantastic chat. Amazing lady from Ukraine um, running two companies of her own. Um, somebody came and sat at our table yesterday, um, a lady from Slovenia, um, telling us about the business she's running and just, you know, just sat at the table and you have a chat. Yeah, that kind of thing is, is fantastic. Um, and then the other thing I love, there's lots of great content here, right? Mm. But um, there are, I don't know how many, there must be hundreds of little tiny booths. Each one is about a meter across, maybe less than it's that. It's like a hot desk. It's like well, a, it is a hot like desk because they change every day. Yeah. Um, and you just walk around and you can just, you can almost sort of scan past and, you know, you'll think six or seven of them not relevant to me. And then you'll just see one and just have a conversation with them and they'll explain. They, yeah. They've got their pitch off pat because they've done it a hundred times. Um, but you're just learning, learning what's going on and where people are thinking. And um, I, I find it massively energizing. You, you come here and it's just really energizing seeing what people are making. And I suppose there's a, there is that thing that, it is amazing to be here, but not everybody can Correct. afford to be here. Not Correct. Can, like, there are lots of conferences. You'd love to be able to go to them all. It's yep. not necessarily uh, practical. So and there is a hybrid version. This is where the metaverse comes in. Yeah. So um, going back to that event we did last night, there were 40 people physically in a space, but we could extend that event. And it's not exactly the same but it's not that far off it because you can have networking where you're moving around the virtual space just before the panel, networking just after the panel, just as you would in the real world. And usually when you go to these events as this one, the content is great, the networking is great, but they're, they're two equivalent sources of real value for you. But we can do that. So one of the things we were involved in was making Burning Man happen in virtual reality. Yeah. And there were a lot of people both last year and this year who could never go to Burning Man because um, it's really expensive. So Burning Man is uh, phenomenally, I mean, the, the word they, they use, the word we use, is radically inclusive. So everyone is welcome. But everyone is welcome who can find several thousand pounds to get themselves to Nevada and get a visa yeah. to get to the US. So what we had was people coming and having a bit of that experience and, and absorbing some of the energy that comes from that amazing creative event wherever they were in the world. Yeah. Now... Facebook rebranding is meta. Yeah. Before I hit record, you said it's clever. They've put their stamp on it. They have. What does it mean for a business like yours and others in the space who might now be looking at it going, Christ, now there's, now there's Zuckerberg, like him or loathe him, who's throwing a lot of money at this to try and become the dominant player? Uh, so they have been for a while. So, I mean, they, they bought Oculus back in, back in 2014 yeah. and they've invested a lot in Oculus. But I'm sorry, I suppose it's now publicly, yep. in the public consciousness. Yep, exactly. And, and it's, it's a bit of a double-edged sword, but on balance is helpful. So um, a friend of mine had a conversation already last week where they mentioned the metaverse and the person they were talking to said, oh, that's Facebook, isn't it? Like, well, no, not quite. Um, but absolutely, he's just, you know, he's pushed it into the public consciousness. And also people have been struggling with, you know, what is the, how do you explain what the metaverse is? Um, and honestly, it's the biggest single problem we have with our business. Um, because nobody's experienced it before, it's very, very hard to explain. As soon as people go into a virtual space, they get it. They're like, oh, I can move around. And what's interesting for us is it kind of gives you a clue as to how old people are. So... Uh, the one we get sometimes is somebody going, oh, I get it, it's Club Penguin. <laughs> <laughs> See, to me, it's, it's, it's Legend of Zelda slash Pokemon. Yeah, right. 
and, uh, and I'm even a bit older. So um, for my lot, oh, it's a bit like network doom. So, um, so you know, um, once people start to have that analogy, and um, you know, we, we make a big deal of trying to say, well, yes, there are there's some similarities. It's a good place to start. It's not a game. So um, we work with financial services clients a lot. As soon as you mention the word game, um, that's a very big, big red flag for compliance. So we have to be very, very careful not to use that terminology. Um, but, you know, to get people started, it's good. And just to get people in it. And, oh, yeah, so the, the short answer to your question is, on balance, it's a good thing. Even if the video was cringy as hell. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And, you know, poor old Nick Clegg. Um, <laughs> with the follow-up as well. The thing is, I, was I, just a I, little I, painful. I, I, I had a lot of respect for Nick Clegg. Rewind 10 years. And yeah. he just seems to... I mean, I'm sure he's making lots of money, but it's like, really? Never mind. Anyway, that's a different bit. Because entirely. Uh, look, we're here, we're sat here. How are you finding the conference? It's great. I mean, I, I got here on Monday. Um, I got here in time for, um, you know, all of the opening speeches. They did an opening night, which is great. Um, there's a lot that goes on during the day. Um, there's a lot that goes on in the evening uh, until quite late. Um, so no, I'm, I'm, I'm having a great time and there's, there's, there's lots of buzz. The sun has come out, which is nice. Yes, yes, uh, finally. It was, it was uh, proper English weather yesterday. Mm, uh, it is November. Uh, one person said to me that in previous years there's been a clear uh, agenda and theme, and that this year perhaps not. What what themes do you have you felt are coming out? Yeah, I mean, normally they've said there's the there's the the two big big themes: the um, the, the crypto and the environmental mm. um, push. Um, and I haven't really seen that. Um, I haven't really seen any evidence of that. Um, there's, there is quite a few crypto and NFT type folks around, but, but not that many. No. Um, I, to be honest, I think, and Paddy Cosgrove said this at the, at the start, they're a little surprised how many people are here. So a couple of months ago, um, they thought they might do well to get 10,000. And now all of a sudden, they're at capacity, which is... 40. Uh, it's 40 now, I mean, normally it's 70, but deliberately yeah, they've, yeah. they've capped it at 40 yeah. um, to give some space. And, um, it I've got feels to say, just as buzzy as previous years. It does feel just as buzzy. They've done a fantastic job. All the volunteers here are phenomenally welcome, lovely people who you can tell are smiling behind their masks. Yeah. So you, you feel very welcome in Lisbon. Um, it's, um, that's all been done phenomenally well, really, really good. As you say, yeah, loads of energy. The, the halls feel full. Yeah. All the halls feel full. Um, there's queues at the um, all of the food outlets for beer oh, yeah, outlets. Yeah, the, the food queues are as bad as they ever are. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, That's part of Web Summit. It's part of, it's part of Web you Summit. You don't try and get food at lunchtime. You go around the city and you see the little square badges on every metro and in every nice um, area where there's bars and restaurants, whatever time of day or night you're out. So, um, so yeah, no, hats off. It's been done really well. I'm mean, yeah, having a great time. Look, thank you for your time. Enjoy the rest of your conference. It's a, a pleasure to finally meet you physically. Yeah.